Hi, this is Brian King. If you're a parent, and I assume you are, then you are very familiar with those moments where your child comes to you with his or her handout asking for yet something else. You know, buy me this, buy me that, take me here. How come I can't have this? My friends have this. And it seems like there's this never ending list of requests that they want you to fulfill. And they almost have a sense that they are owed this somehow. Like you're supposed to just give them these things, just indulge them. And there are times when you feel as though you have squeezed the, the lemon dry. There's nothing left. And you feel unappreciated. You feel your child is ungrateful. And you wish that your child would just get that other people's needs matter too. So this is what I've learned on how to create that teachable moment where you can help your child discover that they're not the center of the universe, that other people have needs as well, and there needs to be a balance. Think of a scenario where your child walks up to you and says, can you take me here? Can you give me that? The way you begin the teachable moment is to ask, sure, I can do that for you, but what are you going to do for me? Suddenly, you're introducing very concretely the requirement of reciprocity, of give and take. And the ultimate goal here, if you've been watching me for a while, is to help your child learn compassion. Learn that we're all connected. We're all in it together. We all need to be taken care of to relieve the, the suffering of the human condition that we all experience. So understanding that essential reciprocity is absolutely necessary to compassion. So you remind your child that, hey, I'd like to get something out of this. And it can sound a little selfish, but in our Western culture, the what's in it for me mentality is pretty common. No, because we do live in a transactional world, don't we? where we're used to buying something and getting something in return. You know, I pay for this hamburger, you give me the hamburger. I pay for the movie, I get to see the movie. So that's just the reality of the world that we're in right now, is it's give and take constantly. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you suddenly ask for something in return, and this is news to your child, like, hey, wait a minute, I decided this was about me. Don't try and make it about you, mom. This is supposed to be about me. So there are moments when your child will become frustrated and accuse you, of all things, of being selfish. Your child may say, oh, well, I came to you asking for something, and you're my mother, and you're supposed to love me and give me that, but all you do is think about yourself. Now, there are some responses where you could respond in anger and say, how dare you accuse me of that? You know, you are so unappreciative. Go to your room. Okay. So you respond with frustration, with anger. You punish your child and the teachable moment is lost. So this is what I recommend to help you hang in there. Your child says, all you do is think about yourself. And here's how you respond. You say, no, I also think about myself because I realize it's not just about me. You and I, dear child, are in this together. You want me to take you somewhere, but in order for me to do that, I have to stop what I'm doing. I have to use my resources, my car, my gas, whatever, and commit it to meeting your need. Doesn't it make sense that we both should benefit from this. Again, thinking transactionally, because that's the world we're in. You give me something, I give you something. So you're looking for balance. Hey, could you do an extra chore for me today? Because that'll free up some time in my schedule that I can now commit to helping you out without getting behind. That's a reasonable request, isn't it? So I want to help you, dear child, but I also need to consider how it will impact my day. So you're thinking about both people's needs. It's not my needs are more important than your needs. Our needs matter. 
Let's see if we can collaborate to make this win-win as much as possible. And one thing I recommend to you as an adult is before you make a request, you ask yourself, will my request cause any kind of suffering for this person? And if so, how can you relieve that suffering? So you can kind of front load the request, show up with an offer. You say, hey, I really like to do this for you. And in exchange, would you be able to do this for me? So you're asking, would you be willing to reciprocate if I helped you with this? Because if you know you're asking someone to give up their time, to give up their resources, if you show them that there is an advantage for them to do so, it's easier for them to say yes. Because again, we live in a transactional world. People think in terms of what's in it for me. So if you solve that problem for them right out of the gate, you have a better chance of getting what you need. Now, what about this notion of shouldn't you give without expectation of receiving? That's an altruistic value that you hear kicked around from time to time. And some of the people that will throw this at you, frankly, are selfish. They don't want to have to reciprocate. So they get angry at you when you require it. They say, you're supposed to give without any thought of return. You know, what kind of a person are you? And they try and make you feel guilty, which is, of course, complete bullshit. They're playing a mind game on you. But there is still something to this. Because as somebody that is aspiring to live a compassionate life, to help receive the suffer, help relieve rather the suffering of those around you. The idea of giving without expecting receiving is based in some respect on the fact that you've been given to your whole life. So many people have helped you get where you are, whether through huge contributions like paying for your college or a teacher's aide that helped you out with the math problem one day when you were stuck and the teacher was too busy. All that stuff has contributed to your success. So in those moments where you help somebody else that is not in a position to, or maybe is completely unwilling to reciprocate, the reason you give so freely and so generously is because you've been given to your whole life. Your bucket has been filled and you've got plenty to give. So in those moments, being able to give without expectation of receiving a return is very easy to do. So please take this lesson with you, and I hope that it is of value. If so, let me know. And feel free to share this video with somebody that you think could benefit from it. And if you want to connect more, please check out my website, thecompassionatedad.com. Talk to you soon.